Part 5 of The Laws of the Skies. So I'm figuring for the YouTube thing, I'll upload the stuff I've already done here on TikTok, but I'll give you other content that you don't see here. I'm thinking like personal stories and uh, hell, I'll do some of the Australia stuff. And maybe art. I don't know. Fire related things. And here is the deer skull that I finally completed for my coworker. I'm very glad to get this out of my apartment. So we move on with the story with Osia, Louis, and Nathan standing at the, like, a little beach for this lake by the campground. Out of the three, Sia was the only one that learned how to swim. The kids figured if Sia could swim along the bank of the lake and look for any houses with lights on, they could probably find some help. Sia was a little nervous, but she agreed to do it. Hugo and the gang wanted to rest for the night in the woods and then keep moving in the morning when they have strength. Enzo kept heading west to follow Jasmine and Emma in hopes to kill again. As he walked along and taunted, Jasmine, Emma, he thought about killing his father. He got angrier and angrier at remembering all of the verbal abuse and the hitting and the beating and him coming home late at night drunk, angry about nothing, and then taking his anger out on Enzo. Enzo wanted to kill his own father. And then Enzo finally grew closer to the girls. At the same time, Sia began climbing in the water and began swimming as the boys are like, Sia, just call for us and we'll wait for you right here, okay? Enzo continued to skulk through the woods. <laughs> He had like a mental break and he began screaming his own fairy tale. There was an eagle in a school of mice. It's hard being an eagle, born to fly amongst rodent ground dwellers. The eagle had to learn to fly in order to leave the nest, or else he would crash and die. You're all mice, all of you, and do you know what eagles eat? Emma and Jasmine at that same time ran into a clearing. They spotted headlights turning around uh, the bend near the clearing, so they were close to the road. So they headed quickly towards the road. At the same time as Sia started to grow tired in the water, what started out was, you know, breast strokes and calm swimming, she began to grow tired and her legs grow weak. She began to call for Louie as she struggled. Nathan began to panic, and he started to climb in the water after her, but it, his feet got stuck in the mud. He was calling for Sia, hoping that his voice would carry and uh, give away their location so she would swim back to them. And at the same moment, we switched back to Enzo, who yelled, Eagles eat little mice! And at that same moment, Jasmine and Emma jumped out into the road, and saw headlights and tried to flag down a car, but was immediately mowed down by a semi-truck. It was a split-second reaction of hopping on the road, boom, semi-truck, the bodies flung into shrubs nearby, so the driver, once he stopped and got out to look for bodies, he thought he hit a deer or something, but the bodies were flung pretty far into the ditch where when the driver got out to look around, he, he didn't see anything, and he just kept driving away. The story kind of jumps around from scene to scene pretty quick, so right after Jasmine and Emma died, we go back to Sia, who grew silent and had drowned a f literally a few meters from Louis and Nathan. The boys, silent, numbed, autopilot, Louis turned and he walked away into the woods, not knowing what to do next. Nathan, angry, confused, his crush just died in front of him. Clean the little hole, BB. Nathan was enraged at Louis, at the circumstance, at watching Sia drown. He was angry that Louis was always better at everything. How he knew Sia had a crush on Louis, and not him. He was angry at the world. Louis was also the one that made Sia swim. Louis was the reason why Sia died. 
Nathan lost it. He tackled and began to beat Louis to death. Throwing Louis on the ground, climbing on top of him, he began to ram Louis's head into the rocks <laughs> so violently that a root that was sticking up out of the ground had pierced the back of his head, causing him to begin to bleed out. Nathan hit Louis over and over and over and over again until Louis stopped moving. And when Nathan realized what he did after he calmed down and let out his steam a little bit, he began to have a breakdown and he started crying. I, I want my mommy. I don't want to play this game anymore. I want my mommy. I don't like this game. Nathan leapt up and he sprinted fast into the woods, crying, sobbing, yelling for his mom, colliding hard with a low branch, ripping the skin on his face, causing him to tumble hard down a hill, landing hard on his shoulder and landing on, I think it was another root that pierced his spine, causing him to lose feeling in his legs, unable to walk. He lay on the ground, bleeding, unmoving, in pain, crying for his mother. In the morning when the sun came up, Hugo's squad realized they have no idea where they are. Mathis was hungry and wanted to go back to camp. Lilu was having a reality break and a psychological breakdown, realizing that she understood what death was. She no longer saw the need to play pretend with Barbies and dolls anymore because it was all fake. Death is real. This is what people are made of, is blood and brains and what's the point in living when knowing that all it is is pain? Raphael was also wanting to go back to camp and eat food like everyone else. And then we swap over to Enzo who woke back up in the camp, sleeping in a tent, in a sleeping bag, climbed out, changed into a new clothes. Yee, baby. He realized how terribly he smelled of blood and sweat and soot, so he went over to a faucet and washed himself off. He realized he was also hungry and began raiding the food reserve, but he realized that, oh, this food in here is kind of trash. I'm going to go look in everyone else's bags to see what their mommies packed them. And he ransacked every single backpack in sight and stole all of their snacks. Enzo packed a little bag full of snacks and equipment and uh, harbored a knife. He got a knife. He went off into the woods with a pure plan of killing everybody. You see, if he took out everyone... No one would be able to rat him out once they were saved. Then he could put on an act and make up a crazy story to, you know, per persuade the public of, eh, it wasn't my fault. The adults will believe me. Nathan, who lay paralyzed on the ground, was in and out of consciousness, lightly calling for his mom. When Enzo found him, he was impressed to see Nathan still alive. Enzo stood over Nathan, trying to taunt him, but realizing that Nathan literally wasn't able to react back, Enzo took out his knife and thought about killing him, but realized he wanted something a little more personal, so he threw the knife aside and kind of circled around Nathan's body. So Enzo climbed on top of Nathan's body, grabbed his head with both of his hands, and put his entire body weight on Nathan's head, squishing him and killing him immediately. Nathan died peacefully. Painfully, but peacefully. Nathan died not thinking about his mom and not thinking about Sia. He died thinking of nothing.